Hey guys, Sam from West Meadow Rabbits here. Mixing it up today, we're doing it in my basement with the ugliest wall I could find. It's freezing cold and wet out there. I just did a video on planting willows. If you want to check that out, I'll link to it in the end of the video. But uh, this is going to be a bit of a long one, so I wanted to come down here where I can get a little comfortable and sort of dig into this with you guys. So, number one thing I hear all the time about people, you know, when they want to get into meat rabbits, is uh, can you make any money with it or can you break even with it? Um, and the short answer is yes, <laughs> with a little star after. You're not going to get rich, certainly not going to get rich. Um, you might not even break even. And depending on what you want to do, that might not be a bad thing. And more importantly, you really need to evaluate why you want to get into meat rabbits. I think there are some situations where it can be a profitable venture, uh, but it needs to be you know, well thought out, and like any other really profitable venture, it needs to be, you know, formal, it needs to be planned, and it needs to be, usually be a part of something else. So I think there is money to be made, and I would like to see the meat rabbit industry actually develop into an industry instead of just a, a hobbyist thing. But in the short term, um, you can definitely make a little bit of change, and in some unique uh, scenarios, you may be able to make a, a decent amount of money. But don't go into this expecting you're going to get rich, and I really wouldn't recommend going into rabbits expecting you're going to make any money. You should plan to not be making money, unless you already have an existing farm, or you're in a region where a rabbit farm could be a financially sustainable business, which we'll get into in a sec. <clears throat> so this is going to be a big one. I got my notes here. So today we're going to cover selling actual rabbit meat. I think this is probably the easiest place to start because we are talking about meat rabbits after all. That's primarily what they're designed for. Um, it's also probably the, the easiest way to make money um, with meat rabbits, but it also is going to be the most dependent on a lot of different factors here. So first and foremost, it's going to depend on where you're located. I am really happy to say that a lot of different people from around the world watch this channel, which I think is freaking awesome. Um, I love you guys from all over the globe. I love hearing from you. I also love everybody in the U.S. <laughs> I appreciate all the views. But um, in certain parts of the country, this is going to make a lot more sense, and in certain parts of the world, it's going to make a lot more sense. So if you're in Southeast Asia or most parts of Africa, I think there's actually a really good opportunity to make a legitimate farming operation. Uh, selling meat rabbits. I don't know too much about these areas, but I have talked to people who say they have actual farms with rabbits in these areas. So I think there's definitely something there, and a lot of this can apply to you. Now, if you're in Europe, especially Southern Europe, you already know that it's pretty normal to eat rabbits, uh, especially in countries like France, Italy, um, and Greece. These are countries that have had these uh, rabbits in their diet for a long time, and there's no stigma around it. And most of the international rabbit industry is actually located there. So another interesting area, but it's Western, and there's a lot of regulations in Western countries, which we'll get to next, that can make it a little difficult. Now, if you're in the U.S., all bets are off. So a lot of interesting stuff has been happening in the U.S., and I'm going to talk the rest of this video about the U.S., although I think it applies to other places. Um, in the U.S., there's a pretty strong stigma about eating rabbit meat. A lot of people look at them as pets, which is an interesting thing. We're a very rich country. You know, whether anybody wants to get into the politics or not doesn't matter. Relatively speaking, we are a ridiculously rich country. And we're so rich that we can look at animals that other people would see as food and we can see pets, uh, which is fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with having rabbits as pets. I have pet rabbits myself. But you just need to be aware that in many places in the U.S., if you say you eat rabbit, people are going to look at you like you have 10 heads. Now, this is changing a little bit, especially with COVID. There's been a huge surge in people wanting to produce their own food, be more self-sufficient, and there's also been simultaneously going on for a while now, moves towards local agriculture and sustainable agriculture. And meat rabbits, in my opinion, sit right there at the junction of all three. They're ridiculously sustainable. I would argue more sustainable than any other common form of livestock we have in the U.S. You can do them at a small scale, so they're hyper-local. And they are the ultimate food security. You know, the reality is if you live in a northern climate, you're not going to be able to live a, on a vegan diet alone. It snows five months of the year and those plants only grow for four months. So they're really great if you're looking for a, uh, a prepping situation as well. Anyways, I could go on that all day. So in the U.S., you need to look first and foremost before you sell rabbit meat at which state you're in and what are your regulations. So interestingly enough, 
rabbits historically in the U.S. have been eaten by very rich people and very poor people. Um, you've seen spikes in interest in rabbits during every major U.S. crisis, the Depression, World War II, the 70s oil crisis. There was these huge spikes in rabbit consumption and backyard meat rabbits, but it never stuck, just like we're seeing right now in COVID. I've sold more rabbits this year than I have in my life. Um, so I, I really would love to see it stick around this time because there's also the benefits of, like I said, sustainability and locality. So now, how does this impact you? Well, if you're in what I would say uh, a left-leaning state, you are probably going to have stricter regulations than somebody in a, in a more right-leaning state just because of the way they approach agriculture and animal rights, which is a whole other subject. But on the flip side, though, people in left-leaning states may actually have a bigger market, especially the high-end market. And this doesn't even apply to states. If you're near a big city, for example, there's a lot of foodies there. There's a lot of rich people there who are willing to pay a premium. Right now, pasture-raised chicken is going for $30 for a five-pound bird. Let that sink in. Um, and that's going to primarily very rich people who can afford to, you know, shop with their wallet, if you will. Uh, and interestingly, there's also a lot of farm-to-table stuff in these areas uh, where the food's a little more expensive, but it comes directly from farmers or it's sourced locally. For example, when I was in Burlington, Vermont, there was a fabulous scratch kitchen, um, and they, they sourced everything that they made from Vermont mostly and New England at large. And rabbit was featured prominently on the menu, and it was the most delicious rabbit I've ever had. I believe the name of the restaurant was Hen in the Woods or something like that. Check it out if you're in the area. But... If you're in close proximity to a, an urban area, an environmentally conscious area, you're going to probably be closer to people who are willing to pay a premium for rabbit. At the same time, you'll also be closer to people who have no experience with livestock or agriculture and are most would get most upset about the idea of somebody eating a rabbit. So you have to take that with a grain of salt too. But ultimately, your proximity to market matters, but what matters more is your state's regulations. Um, the meat regulations in the U.S. are frankly disgusting. I'm not going to get too political about this, but safe to say every single major party in the U.S. and every politician has not done anything about this. These regulations were set up to protect meat monopolies, and they do just that. Thankfully, in recent years, there's been a, an exemption at the federal level, which basically allows up to 20,000 poultry, chickens usually, or 5,000 turkeys, depends on the bird, um, to be slaughtered without a federal inspection. Great news is rabbit is, qua, uh, rabbit is classified as poultry under that exemption. So you can do it locally. Now the requirements are pretty loose at the federal level and um, you know, as far as that exemption goes, but there's a couple caveats. You can't sell over state lines unless it's federally inspected. Um, and you have to follow your local state regulations. So a lot of states have state inspected slaughterhouses that handle chickens and poultry and even some larger animals too. If you're in a more agricultural oriented state, you probably have more. If you're in a really urban state or a small state, you probably have uh, a few. In Massachusetts, where I live, we have a few, but none of them really handle rabbit, which is something you'll run into. And the other problem being is that if I wanted to do it myself in Massachusetts, the regulations are ridiculously strict. It's, it's absurd. I'd have to pay $500 for a license plus thousands of dollars to build a state inspected facility, which I can't do in my backyard. And you know, at that point, it's just lost dollars. But even if I didn't have to, and there was a place that could handle rabbits, most places that process rabbits only accept white rabbits. They only accept a certain age. They'll reject rabbit for any reason um, that's aesthetically problematic because it'll fail inspection and get them in trouble, even though there's nothing wrong with the meat. And they charge an arm and a leg. On uh, a rabbit, just because they're not used to it, they're not set up for that, you're going to be probably paying as much as you would make. So that's something to keep in mind. But on the flip side, if you happen to be lucky enough to live right north of me in New Hampshire or in Maine and even Vermont, I believe, and also New York, the regulations are much looser. Um, and each of those states does have areas where they have, you know, markets for the meat. As you can see in the U.S., the meat picture is complicated. There are some grassroots efforts to deal with political reform, but given the current climate, I'm not optimistic on any federal regulation relief. So you have to do what you can do at local level. And by the way, if you want to get involved, I'm all for you getting involved in your state's politics to try to loosen up your regulations. And I also think it's great the more people that sell meat, uh, the more people that breed rabbits, the more normal it will become and the bigger all of our market will become. So 
even just trying helps normalize it, which helps everybody. So let's just assume you've looked into your regulations and it's legal, you can find a way to swing it. Now, what kind of markets are we talking? I think there's three groups you really can target well, and I know people are selling rabbit around the country, so it is possible. Um, the first group I'd be looking at is, like I said, health conscious consumers, but more importantly, people focused on local sustainable agriculture and are comfortable eating meat. You're not going to be selling any rabbit to a vegan. So farm to table restaurants are a great place to find these uh, online groups and even just being in an area where that's a big deal. Like I said, Burlington, Vermont is a perfect mix of environmentally conscious, but they're also in an agricultural state. So there's a there's a great market there. Um, so try to find places like that in your area. Um, the other option would be to find restaurants, similar situation. There's two different types of restaurants you could target. You could target the really, really fancy high-end restaurants that serve like $50 duck and try to sell them a luxury product, uh, product, you know, like luxury rabbit meat, basically. And I'm sure you could get very good margins on that. Or you could go for a more farm-to-table restaurant, which is more focused on connecting farmers and people who are interested in knowing where their food comes from. Different style restaurants, different marketing tactics, but they both fall under the restaurant category. And the last thing you could check out is look for immigrant communities in your area. So if you have people coming from countries that are totally cool with eating rabbit, I find that typically they're the most game <laughs> customers. Uh, a lot of them are surprised that you have to even have regulation to, to eat meat. They think that if you're a grown adult, you should be able to make your own decisions. I agree. They're great people. I really love um, a lot of the immigrant communities in my area are from West Africa, um, Southeast Asia, Cambodia, Vietnam, and a lot of South Americans who are also, depending on which country they're from, pretty into eating rabbit as well. Usually I find these people are really awesome. They're really excited to be able to find, you know, actual meats, you know, that they're used to back home being able to go to the market and get meat and talk to the person who's selling the meat. And here they kind of miss that. A lot of old Italian immigrants, they their eyes light up when they hear that you have meat rabbits. Ditto for Greek people. Um, there's also a pretty good sized Greek community in my area, and they love rabbit. So it's kind of seek out immigrant communities and see if there's an interest there in, um, you know, if you have any friends or connections to float it out there. My girlfriend is Greek, and her whole family, you know, I give them rabbits, and they, they love it. So definitely check that out if it's an option in your area and you can always try to convert people you know i think a lot of people are more adventurous than you might give them credit for so if you can maybe uh, find a good way to market it highlight the sustainability aspect highlight the ethical aspect especially if you're doing pasture raised or partially pasture raised and also you probably already know how to cook rabbit because you're raising them so if you have any really good recipes any family recipes I tried to get the recipe off of that chef in the restaurant I was at, but I'm not too good with remembering, so I missed most of it. But if you can give, give recipes to people when you sell the meats, that's going to dramatically increase the chance of somebody buying, because most people are just intimidated. They see a rabbit, they don't know what the hell they're going to do with it, they don't know what it tastes like, but it's a very mild meat, as you'll know once you eat rabbit yourself, or if you already have, and uh, once you get it chopped up, it behaves almost exactly like a chicken. So. Providing recipes, providing cut-up instructions, any, anything like that will do a lot to increase your ability to sell. So, you've got your regulations squared away. You have an idea of your markets you want to sell to. Let's actually start talking money now. In any business venture, which if you're going to be selling rabbit meat, you should consider it a business adventure, even if you're doing it small scale. Um, you need to have your numbers squared away, and you need to have at least some planning. So what I've seen typically is high-end rabbit at retail prices goes for seven-ish dollars a pound, which is a ton. If you're selling to a restaurant, you can expect a half to a quarter of that price, somewhere in there, depending on what you negotiate in the restaurant, but they'll be much more consistent buyers. A thing to mention here is selling to stores, wholesalers, and distributors is completely off the table. That is illegal under the federal regulations. The exemptions only allow you to sell directly to consumer or directly to restaurant. You cannot sell to distributors or stores, so don't even think about it. Um, but once you get all that figured out, you can kind of ballpark what your market will bear, and you can try either by selling a few, asking any other farmers you know in the area, or just looking online and seeing if there's any place around you that sells it. And if you're planning on selling to restaurants, by all means, reach out to them. But make sure you're doing it in a professional way. Once you have your rough idea of what your sale price is going to look like in your region, now you can start making some financial feasibility decisions. 
You should already know by now, uh, unless you're extremely new to this, in which case I would recommend doing some research on the feed conversion ratio of your breed. I raise, I raise New Zealands, which are a meat breed. They were bred for commercial production, so they have a very high feed to meat ratio, which is how efficiently they convert feed to meat. But you need to figure that out. You also need to figure out what the dress out percentage is for your breed. That's what percentage of the live weight is left after you butcher it. And then out of that weight, you want to figure out your meat to bone ratio. And there's some information on this out there for commercial breeds. So don't stress it too much. And there's also ways you can figure it out. I mean, obviously the simplest way is weigh the rabbit before you butcher it and then weigh it after. There you go. You've got your dress out um, percentage. So you, you need to make sure you have all that figured out before you can really price out whether it's going to be a financially feasible thing to do. Uh, at the very least, you don't want to be losing money on the rabbit meat you sell, unless you're cool with that. If you're fine with that, I think that's great. You know, more people eating it, the better. But just understand, you're basically going to be giving away meat, which is pretty tough for most people to do. Now, once you've sort of got an idea of what your numbers look like, it's probably really important now to take a good hard look at how far you want to take this. Because there's going to be a huge difference between somebody just selling a few rabbits out of their backyard to some friends and family, if you're in a state that allows you to do that, just to make a little extra cash and try to offset the feed bill, and somebody who's selling hundreds of rabbits to restaurants or uh, farmer's markets. And by the way, I know people who do that. They're still not making a full-time living off of it, so keep that in mind. But it is definitely possible. However, the level of planning and financial thought that's going to need to go into that is going to vary wildly. Obviously, if you only have a few rabbits right now, you should not be trying to plan a 500 whole rabbit operation. In case you don't know, hole is the hole in the cage. That's how we measure, you know, how big a rabbit tree is. Anyways, I digress. <clears throat> At the same time, if you have no rabbits right now, you should not be even worrying about selling meat. You should be getting a few rabbits for yourself, practicing your butchering skills, practicing taking care of them, and really getting the learning curve mastered. When you sell rabbit meat, in our country, it's really important that you provide a professional, polished experience, even if you're doing it small scale, even if it's only five or 10, and even if it's out of your backyard. Because it's such a, a uncommon thing in the US, if you mess up when you're selling meat, you make us all look bad. You can turn off somebody from the, you know, the entire idea of rabbits as meat by giving them a bad experience, which is the last thing we want. So it's your responsibility, especially when you're selling food to people, and it's your responsibility to the rabbit community, the people who raise rabbits, um, to do your best and make sure you're doing this 100% professionally. That means planning ahead, running your numbers, and bringing us to my next point, you need to make sure your butchering skills are on point, especially if you're selling to restaurants. It's good to know what the standards are in a federally or state inspected facility, they do not allow any fur on the corpse, any fecal material, any, you know, basically major defects, major cuts in the meat, any, ex uh, a lot of blood, improperly bled, all that stuff will get the carcass disqualified and you should have the exact same philosophy for your own meat you're producing. Unless you've talked to your customers ahead of time and unless they explicitly agree that they don't mind getting a meat that's a little bit meh. You should not be bringing that to farmer's markets. You should certainly not be bringing that to restaurants because that'll get you out of there in five seconds flat. Um, and I really recommend you take a lot of time and you practice getting really good at butchering before you start offering rabbits for sale. And again, this applies all the way from a few rabbits to a few hundred. If you're lucky enough to live in a state where you have a facility that will handle your rabbits and they you don't mind raising white rabbits and you've got a good uh, price point there, by all means, go ahead and do that. It'll save you a lot of hassle, especially if you're doing hundreds of rabbits. But otherwise, for most people, it's probably going to be like five or ten rabbits a month. Maybe more if you're a farm and you're integrating this as another enterprise. But it's still something to make sure you've got down pat. I'll link to down below a video of Joel Salatin's son, Daniel Salatin, and how he butchers rabbits. And they sell a good amount of rabbits on Polyface Farm. You can check that out, polyfacefarm.com. They're a diversified farm that sells a lot of different meat products, but they've actually integrated rabbits there into a nice, you know, profitable little line of business. And I think, especially if you have a farm, that's a whole other subject, but I think it's really awesome to integrate rabbits if you can because you already have an existing base of customers and they complement a lot of other enterprises nicely. Two other things to consider here is selling the live rabbits themselves. I've heard this before. 
In the south, there are a few Pell Freeze facilities. That's the largest distributor of rabbit meat in the U.S. And if you're within 100 miles or so from them, you can usually offload a lot of rabbits. You know, they'll buy a ton. You know, basically all you can sell, as long as they meet the requirements. They're white and everything. Um, and they will then buy those rabbits, butcher them, you know, in a federally inspected facility and sell them to their customers. If you're lucky enough to be in another part of the country and you can find an arrangement like that, that's great. But just keep in mind, for a live rabbit, you are getting bottom-of-the-barrel prices. The real value you add when you're selling rabbit meat is the butchered product. Think about it. Most people don't want to butcher the rabbit. That's the hard part. That's the part where the money is made. So if you're selling live rabbits, whether that's to customers directly, because there's no law anywhere about selling a live rabbit to a customer and then them going home and butchering it, or to a facility you shouldn't expect more than five dollars an entire rabbit compare that with seven dollars a pound retail for um a dressed out rabbit so there's a huge price difference there and for all except the biggest of guys it's not that practical and i don't think it's that helpful for you as a breeder most of you i imagine are probably just looking to offset the costs of you know having some rabbits around and we're gonna cover some other ways to do that in the next two videos but it is possible with meat. Again, I just want to emphasize, if you already have a farm, the discussion is a little different. I think it's a profitable enterprise that you could integrate if you have the market for it. For everybody else, um, in the U.S. at least, it's going to really depend on your location. And if you can find the market, great. I say go for it. Just keep it professional, plan ahead, and try to find a price that's good for you, but the market will also bear. I think $7 in that range is pretty reasonable for a rabbit if you can find somebody who can afford it if you can do it cheaper by all means okay but what if you are in a market where it's basically impossible to sell the meat you have some customers who are interested though but because of regulations you can't uh you're not planning on getting rich you're not planning on doing this large scale just a few people you know who want to give you some money for it now i'm not advocating anything illegal this is a purely hypothetical scenario but I am of the opinion that if a law is unjust, it's your job as a citizen to do a little civil disobedience on that law. I think the Founding Fathers would be totally down with that. And I also think it's very safe to say that the meat laws in the U.S. are beyond unjust. A consenting adult who knows what they're getting into and is fully informed of the risks should be able to do what they like when it comes to purchasing food. And if somebody was inclined to undermine some ridiculous federal or local regulations, I would say keep a couple things in mind. Number one, everything I said before still applies, especially doing a good job keeping hygiene clean, organized, and professional. And that goes for every step of the process. In addition, I think it's really important that you let your customer know, if you were in this situation, exactly what's going on and what the arrangement is, and I recommend not advertising this except to people you know or people you've established a relationship with because there are some people out there who just have a real big problem with people eating meat and rabbits in general and just want to make your life miserable. And that's the last thing you need if you're in a state where they've sort of influenced unjust regulations. Uh, so definitely try to maintain a low profile. And remember, there's other ways around this too. You can sell butchered rabbit meat to people without any regulations for animal consumption. For example, a lot of people feed their dogs the raw diet. And while that in and of itself is a great market, especially for organs, ears are a fantastic dog treat, especially if they've been dried. Organs are also, like I said, great. Uh, trimmings, all that kind of stuff. But people will actually buy the entire rabbit to feed their dogs. However, if somebody bought a rabbit for their dog and then wanted to eat it themselves, you're not really responsible for what they do after they buy it. So you can definitely make a point of informing people when you're doing things, especially if you were in our hypothetical situation breaking any regulations, you could very clearly say to them, listen, I prepare this meat the exact same way I do for my own table. However, under current regulations, I'm not legally allowed to sell this to you for human consumption. So I am selling this to you for consumption by animals, and you're acknowledging that that's what you're using it for. However, what you do with it is your business. And I think that's a really interesting and awesome way to go about it. And if you have a relationship with people and you're doing a very professional job, you shouldn't run into too many issues. 
So, I know this has been a super long video and I sort of steamrolled right through that because it's a big subject and meat in particular is really complicated and it's really going to depend on where you are locally. Again, know your markets, know your numbers, know your regulations, and have a plan. That's the best advice I can give you. Now, in part two of this series, we're going to talk about how I primarily make money with rabbits. And personally, I have sold meat in a uh, hypothetical situation kind of way for human, uh, non-human consumption, animal consumption only. But it's not a huge income stream for me, which again is fine. I don't think everybody should be selling meat unless they really want to do that. And again, I really don't think you should be doing this if you're trying to make money in the first place. Part two, we're going to talk about selling breeding stock. Now, breeding stock is a whole different animal, <laughs> pun intended, I guess. We'll get into it there. It's going to be probably as long as this, but either way, regardless of which, which path you choose, just remember, this is not a get-rich-quick scheme. Professionalism is the rule at all times, and if you're just getting into this hobby to try to break even, it's going to make it a lot less fun and a lot less enjoyable. The main reason you should be doing this is for your own family and for your own health and maybe your friends. Unless you already have a farm or you're planning on starting a diversified farm and want to make this a part of that. Otherwise, there's really no reason to try to be making absurd amount of money or even a lot of money with rabbits. It's just not, it's not going to work. It's going to ruin it for you and it's just going to set you up for disappointment. But anyways, on that note, I'll see you guys over in part two. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it at all useful, please like, subscribe, share. It really helps me, helps the channel. These videos take a lot of effort to make, and I would love to get monetized someday. So I really appreciate all the support I get from you guys. And until then, I will see you in the next video, and thank you for watching.